بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم اللهم صل على محمد من الأزل إلى الأبد اللهم لك الحمد أدد قطرات الماء في البحار الدنيا والآخرة so today I want to talk about a very interesting point I learned from another brother. He touched upon it, and I'll be introducing you inshallah very soon to this brother, but he touched upon this and I found it very fascinating. And so I was thinking about it and I thought I should share it with you inshallah. Part of the malaise, part of the mental health issue Part of the spiritual illness the Muslims have is that we are completely historically unaware of where we're standing in history. It seems the Prophet ﷺ wanted us to understand in our history of Islam that we always knew the ulama and the people of knowledge and the scholarship of Islam understood or a portion of the people understood where we are standing in history. When you know where you're standing in history, you know what is before you. One of the great effects, one of the spiritual effects of being under a prophet, meaning the word prophet means, you know, Nabi, the one who tells you the future. One of the great effects of being under a Nabi of Allah is that you can see what is ahead of you. One of the blessings. Anyway, what I want to share with you is that an event of the Prophet in one of the manifestations of Dijjal. You see, this man Ibn Siyad, who was born in a Jewish family, who was born blind, and he had other, uh, you can say, uh, he had other attributes that were similar to the Jal, and he had other attributes that were similar to prophets. Like Ibn Sayyad, he went to sleep, but his eyes went to sleep, his heart didn't go to sleep. And this is the same for the Prophet. So this the Jal and one of the manifestations of the Jal has the symbol the the attributes of being the jal but also has some attributes of being a prophet this is how he's able to deceive so there are many narrations about the narration i'm going to discuss today the one i'm going to show you is the one in sahih bukhari under the book of other that the jal is under the other of allah and that the jal has limitations compared to nabi muhammad sallallahu so in one of the manifestations of Dijjal, the Prophet said to Ibn Sayyad, I have kept for you a secret, meaning I'm testing you. Qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam li Ibn Sayyad. He said, I'm keeping a secret. What is in my mind? Right? So qala dukh. He said, you're thinking of dukh. A dukh. Dukh means smoke. As you know, smoke is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment. So the Prophet ﷺ said, See, you have, keep quiet, the Prophet said, you cannot go beyond your limits. You cannot go beyond your limits. He was, the Prophet ﷺ was thinking about either Surah Al-Dukhan or the ayahs that relate to smoke mentioned in Surah Al-Dukhan. And so there are many narrations in this regard. Okay. There is also this narration by Ibn Umar and Sahih Bukhari. The one in, by Abdullah uh, in, um, in Sahih Muslim under the Kitab al you have. And then Fa'il uh, Kitab al Jihad in Sahih Bukhari again, and uh, Jami al Tirmizi under the Kitab al Fitan. You find the same hadith, different. Uh, some have more lengthy narrations, some have short narrations, right? And Sahih Bukhari under the funeral, 
the book of funerals, and so on and so forth. Okay, but the point here is the prophet was thinking of something. Okay, the prophet was hiding something from him for him to see, and he saw and he said, "I saw," or he was seeing smoke. And the Prophet told him, you're limited in what you are, been, your abilities are limited. His n abilities to read other people's mind is limited, and therefore he will use technology to complete what he can't himself complete. This is the first point. Second point is that the Prophet gave him a message. The Prophet doesn't do anything just by chance. And the Prophet doesn't test him just by chance. Because Umar afterwards wanted to kill him, and the Prophet said, no, you can't kill him, it's not in the Qadr. If it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. If he's Dajjal, then, you know, it's not in your, it's not in the Qadr. You can't kill somebody, it's not written for you to kill. And Dajjal can't do something that's not written for him to do. So both things are there. Umar radiallahu anh couldn't kill him because it was not in his Qadr. And this man, Ibn Sihad, then vanished later on in history. I'm not going to talk about that today. But what I'm going to talk about is why the Prophet made him think or made him test on Surah Al-Dukhan. Why the Prophet made him test? Why did the Prophet test him with Dukhan? Why did the Prophet test him in regarding to the words of Surah Al-Dukhan, Dukhanim Mubin, Yakshan Nas, that smoke that will overwhelm the people and they will say, this is Adabun Alim, this is a great punishment upon us, Allah relieve us of this. Because that punishment that will come upon people in the form of a smoke and Dajjal and its different manifestations, in, there is a link there. Ibn Sayyad is a manifestation of Dajjal. What Tamim ad darmi saw when he went to the idol, that's a manifestation of Dajjal. So these are different manifestations of Dajjal. They're interconnected. But when the Prophet is there with Ibn Sayyad, he tests him and he makes him see the smoke and he thinks about Sutu Dukhan. So there must be a message for us and there was a message for him in Surah Al-Dukhan. And the message is, now let us look at what Surah Al-Dukhan says. Because this mentioning of the smoke and how it will cover people and it will be a punishment for the people before the Day of Judgment. And the people will pray to Allah. Right? That Allah remove this difficulty from us and Allah will remove it for them. He is giving the message to the Dajjal. Yes, you will create great destruction on earth, but it will be limited. Just as you can't tell what I am thinking, you are limited. The Prophet said this to the Dajjal. You are limited in what you do. Both positively and negatively. Positively, he couldn't tell what the Prophet was thinking. He was limited. Negatively, Umar radiallahu anh wanted to kill him and he couldn't kill him. Now, come with me further. okay? And one day, inshallah, we'll go through all of these. I'm inshallah going to have a class in which I will be talking about all these narrations one day. So about the A'udhu Billahi the Shaitan Rajim. Let's listen to what Sutta Dukhan is saying. What is the message the Prophet was relaying to us and relaying to Dajjal? Let us now see. Hamim. And by the clear book. Now, just after this introduction, you'll see this few ayahs of introduction. We've sent this down in a very blessed night. Look, we're warning you. We're warning you. Now, what? فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ In it is every 
thing decided by Allah's wisdom, every amr, every command is decided by Allah's wisdom. All of this is Allah's wisdom. Amra min indina. Allah says, this is a command from us. The coming down of this book and everything that it will ha will happen. Wa inna kunna mursileen. And we are the ones who send. Okay? We are the ones who send a messenger. Rahmatan min min rabbik. A rahma. A mercy from your Rabb. إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيُّونَ عَلِيمٌ He is the one who listens to the du du du'as. He is Samiyun Alim. One of the greatest weapons against the Jah. Then Allah continues to give the introduction about Himself. He does everything out of hikmah. And everything has been decided. And everything as it will be by the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what does Allah say? Rabbi samawati wal ardi wa ma baynahuma. He is the Rabb, meaning Allah, of as samawat, the heaven, wal ard, the earth, wa ma baynahuma, and whatever is between them. Things like we make things in between heavens and earth, like time. In kuntum muqinin, if you are going to have certainty, this is the truth. La ilaha illahu. There's no divine other than Him. Yuhi wa yumid. He gives life. He gives death. To who He lives, He wants to live, lives. You can't escape this. When Allah wants your death, you can't escape it. Rabbukum wa rabbu abaukum. Your Rabb and the Rabb of your forefathers. Awaleen that came before. But they play in. But they play. Wahum fi shakin yalabun. But they play in doubt. They play in doubt. See, this is part of the deception of the Jal. He plays you in doubt, puts you in doubt of what is mubin and yaqeen, which Allah described before, what is obvious, what is clear, that Allah sent his book, he sent his messengers, and he is the Rabb of the Samawati wal Ard. Bal hum fi shakin yal'abun. But he makes them play in doubt. Then Allah says, فَرْتَقِبْ يَوْمَ تَعْتِ السَّمَاءُ بِدُخَانِ الْمُبِينَ Then that day will come where the sky will come with a clear cloud. That sky will come with a clear cloud. This has happened very few times in history in the way that it came to Nagasaki and Hiroshima and then Beirut. Okay, Very few times it's happened. And because... The punishment of Dajjal is specific to the Arabs. This is the first time that it has come in this way to the Arabs. So it is significant. It is significant that the Prophet said Dukhan, was thinking of Dukhan when he was talking to Dajjal. فَرْتَقِبْ يَوْمَ تَعْتِ السَّمَاءُ بِدُخَانٍ مُبِينٍ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَرْتَقِبْ يَوْمَ تَعْتِ السَّمَاءُ بِدُخَانٍ مُبِينٍ That day has come close when the sky will be full of smoke. This can be many wars or one war or one event, it, but it will happen. Yakshan nas, it will cover the people. And they will say, Hada adabun alim. This is a very painful punishment. Okay? Yakshan nas, hada adabun alim. Rabbana kshif anna al-adaba inna mu'minu. Then, once... They have no choice but to turn to Allah, then they'll turn to Allah. And they'll say, Rabba nakshif anna adhaba. Oh Allah, please turn us away from your punishment. Inna mu'minu, now we believe. What about before? A prophet has already come to you before you didn't believe. Now you believe. This is all happening before the Day of Judgment. This is why, inna mu'minu, we believe. And they're praying to Allah, Allah, take away this punishment from us. What we have seen is only a tip of the iceberg that is yet to come. أَنَّ لَهُمُ الذِّكْرَى وَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ رَسُولٌ مُّبِينٌ The messenger was more true than this smoke that's punishing you. 
and he has already come. They said about the Prophet, he's Mu'allimun Majnoon. He's a crazy teacher, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then Allah says, okay, you're doing dua to me. Maybe now you say you believe, okay. Allah's Rahmah is such that we don't deserve it. The way we have behaved with Allah and His Messenger and His Deen and made a mockery of Islam. But Allah, Allah is Allah. Allah is Rahim. Then what? Inna kashiful azab qalilan. We will let go of the punishment for a little while. This could mean that there will be a bigger punishment in the hereafter, in the day of judgment. So Allah lets go of the punishment in dunya. But it could mean that it, punishment will come. You at that time will say we believe. And then Allah lets it go for a little while because you return back to the same behavior again. Inna kumara idun. And then Allah, then another punishment comes. Then you turn to Allah. Then another pun. Then you turn away from Allah. Then another punishment comes. You might fall into that cycle. That day, the day of judgment, perhaps Yoma The day we will grab you with a great grabbing kubra, big one in Namuntakimun, and we will take revenge. And we will take revenge. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the people before. And then this is how the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be tested. Like they were tested, the people of Bani Israel were tested in the beginning with Fir'aun. Okay, you will be tested in the end with Dajjal. So now I want to share with you this. This is a slow motion of what happened in Beirut. And I want you to think. The message of the Prophet to Dajjal. You will do this, but you will be limited. And when you see smoke covering the people, and the people crying, and it will be a punishment on the people, that time will be the time of Dajjal. The Prophet's telling this to Dajjal. And the Prophet is telling us to this, us this. And the Prophet is telling us, study Sutud Dukhan. And this is just the beginning of that smoke. This is the first of many series of smokes. A smoke that is so clear that will cover the people. The whole city was covered with smoke.
Smoke covered everywhere. Yakshan Nas. A punishment upon the people. And this is tip of the iceberg, like I said. This is a trailer of what is to come. A smoke that is a punishment. Not to an individual. Like if you're smoking cigarette, it's to the individual and to the people. This will cover all the people. So here is something for us to think about. The discussion between the Prophet and Ibn Sayyad, who is one of the manifestations of Dijjal. And why the Prophet thought of Sutul Dukhan. And what was the message the Prophet was relaying to this man, who, Ibn Sayyad, was a manifestation of Dijjal. And even the Umar radiallahu wanted to kill this young boy, but the Prophet said, you cannot do what is not in the Qadr of Allah. And the Prophet told Ibn Sayyad, you cannot go beyond your limits in the Qadr of Allah. You can't know what I'm thinking. You got it, but you don't got it. It's, it is Dukhan, but it is Surat Dukhan. It is the word of Allah that the Prophet was thinking about. And this is another thing, that when you are faced with shayateen, when you are faced with evil, the solution is to focus on the book of Allah, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to focus on those particular words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that relate to that evil that you are seeing. So, أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات.